Hi there, my name is Salman and I'm today going to explain neuroanatomy specifically the pathways and the tracts. But before I start I need to remember a very important point which is that we are here by our free will. And if that means something, it means that we want to learn, we want to educate uh, and that's make a difference, a very huge one. Uh, and your energy, your focus with me, but anything that's make you busy in other planet, okay? In other planet and let's start uh, one last point before I start in the pathway and the tract I need to make an introduction about the, uh, the structure that the pathway it's uh, go through it so we will know what we are talking about in the first place nervous system nervous system is subdivided to peripheral nervous system and central nervous system the peripheral nervous system is uh, more subdivided to autonomic and somatic. Autonomic is uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic. And uh, the central is subdivided to spinal cord and brain. Brain, which is cerebrum, cerebellum, and brain stem. Sorry, but that is just can't uh, get to the end of the spinal cord is divided to 31 segment equal 31 spinal nerve in each side the right side and the left side okay uh, now the cervical have eight nerves the thoracic have 12 nerves the lumbar have five nerves the sacral have five also and the gluteal have one in each side okay remember in each side this is again a cervical 12 thoracic five lumbar Five secular and uh, secular and one coccygeal. Uh, the formation of the spinal nerve. We have a dorsal root, which must to be pure sensory, and here ventral root and must be uh, pure motor, and they mix it in the intervertebral foramen. Okay, they mix it here. That's mean we it might it will be uh, have a impulses of motor and sensory. Uh, and divide to dorsal ramus and ventral ramus. Now the internal structure of the spinal cord. The edge shape is the gray matter, okay. And the white uh, color is the white matter. In the gray matter, we have a posterior horn, lateral horn, and anterior horn. And in the white matter, we have a, a posterior median sulcus. And posterior median septum, and in the anterior side we have an anterior median fissure, and in the center we have the central canal. Next slide. Sense and motor control of the body up, down, left, right. Uh, what's that supposed to mean? That means is the uh, the brain or the hemispheres it's control the body in a opposite side or a reversed manner. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, if you imagine with me, the right hemisphere or the left hemisphere, let's say the left hemisphere, the left hemisphere is controlled the right side of the body, okay? And the right hemisphere is controlled the left side of the body. Okay, that's confused. What, what makes it more confused, that is, the lower part of the motor area and the sensory area, it's received and send the impulses to control the head or sense to, from head and neck. And the upper, it's con uh, receive and control the lo uh, the lower limb, brain stem. We have a, a right side and left side. Uh, in the left side, we have the mid uh, left mid brain, left uh, bones, left medulla oblongata, and also we have it in the right uh, side. We have a uh, right mid brain, right bones, and right medulla oblongata. Next slide. Okay, now we will get to the real deal. Sorry about the hand right, but <laughs> we, uh, I hope that you will understand from my uh, explaining. Now, we have in the tract, we have a long and short. Short is intersegmental, okay? That is between the segment. Uh, and the long, we have an ascending, as, as we mentioned before, it's a sensory. And this descending is motor. Ascending, because it, it's a, if your receptor it's a, receive, receive an, a stimuli, it's ascending to the cortex or the brain. And the descending is descending from the brain and the cortex and the brain stem downward to the spinal cord. Okay, now the ascending we have exterior receptive and uh, broad receptive. The exterior receptive we have a pain and temperature and light and touch. Uh, 
ladder. So uh, the lateral spinothalamic tract and ventral spinothalamic tract, it's carried, sorry, it's carried the pain, temperature, light touch, and light touch. Uh, pre uh, proprioceptive, it's conscious, which is grassy lancunate, and subconscious, which is uh, spinocerebellar tract, ventral, and dorsal. First uh, tract that we will go to discuss is the lateral and the ventral spinothalamic tract. Uh, we will start with the lateral. The lateral it's carry the pain and the temperature sensation. Okay, if you feel pain, if you feel uh, the uh, the temperature increase or decrease, it will carry the, through this uh, tract. The first uh, fiber or the first uh, impulse it's carried to the dorsal ganglia from the receptors to the dorsal root ganglia, which is uh, I mentioned before. It's uh, uh, find in the dorsal root. It's go with the axon to the substantial gelatinosa of Randin. Okay, and substantial gelatinosa is give um, uh, an axon uh, running behind the central uh, canal and come out from the lateral uh, column because that we call it lateral spinothalamic tract and ascending here. Okay, till it's uh, arrived to the posterior lateral ventral nucleus. And this nucleus is in the spine, uh, sorry, in the thalamus, and this is not subject. So I, all what I need is to remember this uh, name of the nucleus, the posterior lateral ventral nucleus. And from here, it's give an a uh, sensory radiation. This more clear here. This is the radiation to in the sensory area, which is three one two. Okay, we will move to the next uh, tract, which is the light touch. Uh, same as well, it's go to the dorsal root ganglia. All the sensation, it's go first to the root, dorsal root ganglia. Okay, this is uh, the common thing or common path. And after that, it's go to the main sensory nucleus. Okay, and it's go also the axon. It goes to cross to the opposite side and come out from the ventral. Okay, here it's come out from the ventral, and that we call it ventral spinothalamic tract and ascending to the same nucleus uh, posterior lateral ventral nucleus and give it also an sensory radiation okay here in the brain stem we don't call it a posterior uh, sorry uh, we don't call it a lateral or ventral uh, spinothalamic tract we call it spinal lemniscus okay uh, next or before I forget to mention the compare table, which is lateral and ventral uh, tract. In the function, we have pain and temperature in the lateral spinothalamic tract, and in the ventral we have a light and touch. The origin of the lateral spinothalamic tract is a substantial gelatinosa from landing, and in the uh, ventral we have uh, MSN, which is main sensory nucleus. The lesion. Of the lesion of the uh, the lateral uh, spinothalamic tract, it's loss of pain, okay, and temperature sensation of the opposite side. Why the opposite side? Because here, it's close to the opposite side. If we lose the sensation here, we lose it in the opposite side because in the right, as we mentioned before, it's control the left and the left is control the right. So we will, uh, if the the pathway it's close to the opposite side, we will lose the sensation in the uh, opposite side. I hope that I don't make it more confused. And uh, now in the ventral, in the ventral, uh, the sign are not detected clinically because touch is also carried by gracile and cunate, and that's very clear. If uh, if the the uh, ventral tract is uh, have a lesion, it's not uh, that important because we have another uh, tract that is uh, move or carry this uh, touch. The, or the sensation of the touch. Okay, next a tract or conscious tract. They start as well from the or they carry from the dorsal root ganglia to the uh, posterior or dorsal uh, column ascending. This we will go with the gracile first. They ascend to the gracile nucleus in the medulla, specific uh, closed medulla, and they cross to the opposite side. Uh, and made the medial lemniscus, the ascending to the bones or through the bones, ascending also through the midbrain until they reach the post central gyrus and made the uh, sensory radiation. Okay, uh, same as same as well the cunate tract 
they start arcade from the dorsal root ganglia to the uh, dorsal root ascending to the cuneate nucleus and cross to the opposite side made the medial meniscus ascending through the bones through the midbrain till they reach the post central gyrus and make the central radiation the function of it they create proprioception and fine touch from the other side of the body below the head okay the lesion of the dorsal colamin sorry the lesion of the dorsal colamin leads to the loss of proprioception manifest by high stepping and unsteady gait if you remember the summer wrestling they hit their legs with the powerful hit to the ground okay this uh, similar to the walking of the people that have a lesion in this uh, grassy and queen trap okay they walk as a summer wrestling uh, i hope that you understand this example next the subconscious or the dorsal ventral so uh, spinal cerebellar tract okay we will start with the dorsal uh, spinal cerebellar spinal tract they start as well from dorsal uh, root ganglia or carried from dorsal root ganglia, ganglia to the clarky nucleus okay ascending here till they reach the inferior abduncal or inferior cerebral abduncal we have a three abduncal before i get to the details we have three abduncal we have a superior inferior middle and inferior the dorsal spinal cerebellum it's get to uh, in, or enter through the uh, inferior cerebral abduncal okay uh, clark nucleus inferior abduncal okay this is the dorsal and in the ventral cerebral tract is start from or carried by fiber from dorsal root area to the spinal spinal border uh, nucleus uh, goes to cross the opposite side uh, remember they crossed to the opposite side behind the central canal ascending till they reach the uh, superior uh, peduncle or superior superior peduncle and they re go to make the sensory radiation uh, this is the table to compare between the dorsal and the ventral in the origin they, uh, the dorsal is clarky ventral is uh, spinal border the side the same side as you see this the same side but in the ventral it's close to the opposite side okay they all they they come and of, out from the ventral or sorry in the from the lateral here from the lateral and the peduncle here it's the inferior here it's the superior peduncle ds of midbrain or transverse section of midbrain here in the gray color this is the thick thumb and here in the red this is what we call cerebral abduncal we have also cerebral abduncal on the left side but uh, so i don't crop the diagram i read some information on the right some information on the left but same we have in the two side okay this is the tegmentum okay and here this is a nucleus and it's red so we called it red nucleus and why it's red because the iron pigmentation here we have a substantia nigra and because the myelin is uh, highly in here in highly concentration here it's the cross cerebri here cross cerebri and also we have a cross cerebri here we have a red nucleus and we have a tigment tunnel that uh, small uh, space or the um, triangle it's aqueduct okay now we have the descending tracts we have an abramidal tract which is corticospinal and corticobulbar the extra pyramidal we have a tectospinal, lobrospinal, olivospinal, rectospinal, and vestibulospinal. We will start with the corticospinal. The corticospinal tract it's a start descending in a fan shaped pattern called a corona radiata. For its path through an internal capsule, this is the internal capsule, and it's descending through the cross brain in midbrain and uh, from in the basal part or basal puntize in the bones and it descend through the open medulla and it's uh, also uh, descending through the closed medulla and cross to the opposite side in the closed medulla and make or the pyramidal uh, decussation it's occur in the closed medulla and 80% from uh, the corticospinal it's uh, cross to the opposite side and we called it lateral 
cortico spinal and 20% approximately 20% it's we called cortico sorry ventral cortico spinal and also in the corti ventral cortico spinal it's close to the opposite side but just before they end in the or just before they pierce the vertebra or sorry the um, white matter it's uh, close to the opposite side to the anterior horn cell as we mentioned before the motor uh, nuclei it's the anterior horn cell so it's close to the opposite side to the anterior horn cell and here in the 80 percent they also cross to the uh, or move to the anterior horn cell so again motor area uh, fan shape or coronal data from the internal capsule this is by mistake so it don't matter this is the right one uh, here descending through the cross brain in the midbrain to base the ties through the open medulla close medulla Clo uh, close to the opposite side make the pyramidal decussation descend in to uh, vertebra or the spinal cord and goes to the uh, ventral or sorry to the anterior horn cells or anterior horn nuclei and 20 percent of uh, corticospinal it uh, goes without crossing in the closed medulla it's crossed be in the uh, before just before they pierce the uh, um, white matter scores with the fibers to the anterior horn cell uh, or nuclei. The next pyramidal tract is the corticobulbar tract. The tract is start from the motor ear, specifically the lower part of the motor ear. And if we remember what that means, that means it will control the upper part of the body, which is the head and the neck. So it will give the cranial nerves in the head and the neck. It starts at the coronal data from the motor area, from the lower part of the motor area. It goes through the internal capsule. It descending, but uh, one addition uh, uh, information. What is the internal capsule? Internal capsule. This is the area to co uh, coordinate and uh, uh, limiting the rate of the capsule. So uh, for, of the impulses of the motor signals. So it's tough and maybe the rate is me exceeded so the internal capsule it's control the side the impulses it descending here to give the right and the left nucleus of the third fourth fifth and sixth until it's uh, reach the seventh nucleus or the official uh, nucleus it's uh, I put here a line to detect to detect the upper part and the lower part of the nucleus so if we are on the left side it will give the upper part of the nucleus and the upper part and the lower part of the opposite side so if we are in the right side it will give the upper part of it on side and the uh, upper part and the lower part of the opposite side and that is will give a benefit so if some lesion happen in the right side it will uh, be avoided in the right side and in the, also in the ninth and the tenth it's give the right and the left side but the 12 and the 11, it's given just the opposite side of the, uh, the nerves. So if we are in the right, it will give the, the opposite side of the 12 and 11. And if we are in the uh, left, it will give the opposite side of the 12 and the 11 uh, nucleus. So as I mentioned, corticobulbar gives a motor cranial nuclei of the same side and opposite side, except the lower part of the facial nucleus. It gives the itself, uh, it on side and the opposite side, upper part and the lower part, and the hypoglossal and the accessory uh, nerve. Uh, one addition. Uh, Information: What's the function of the corticobulbar? Corticobulbar it's uh, initiation of voluntary movement and uh, it uh, facilitation the superficial uh, reflex and the stretch reflex. And if somebody is asking why we call it pyramidal tract, we call it pyramidal tract because the cells in the cortex uh, here and the cortex this is the cortex the cell here it's uh, like a pyramid the body of the cell. It's look like a pyramid, so we call it a pyramidal tract. The extra pyramidal tract is uh, we have a six centers: two in the midbrain, two in the pons, and two in the medulla oblongata. We will start from the midbrain. As we mentioned, we have a two. One is start from the midrectum to reach the spinal cord, so we call it tic two spinal tract. And one is start 
from the red nucleus, so we called it ROPRO. ROPRO, that means it's related to the red nucleus. Till it's reached the spinal, so we call it RECTO, or sorry, uh, RECTO, or ROPRO uh, spinal tract. It starts from the tecta, decussation on the front of the aqueductor, and pierce the midbrain till it's reached the spinal to give its fibers of the anterior, the, the fibers it's give the, to the anterior horn cell. And the rubro spinal or rubro spinal tract, it's uh, decussation here, and we call this is the ventral the tegmentum decussation, and the past or the tegmentum decussation, we call it dorsal tegmentum uh, decussation. Here, the rubro spinal, we back to the, uh, our tract, the rubro spinal tract, it's uh, start here, and the decussation in the uh, tegmentum, so we call it ventral tegmentum decussation, and then uh, descending here till it's reached the uh, target in the uh, spinal cord to give its uh, fibers to the anterior horn cell. Okay, we, here we finished to uh, the two midbrain uh, tracks. Now we will go to the mid pons. Pons, we have do you see this the, the red things? This is the vestibule nuclei. We have a lateral and medial, two lateral and two medial. Okay, in the right side and the left side. So we will start in the right side here. This is the puntine reticular nuclei. Lateral is start as the following. We called it the vestibule spinal uh, tract because it's uh, here it start from the vestibule. So it's descending, uh, the, the fibers descending in the spinal cord and end in the anterior horn cell. Okay. Uh, and in the medial, it's also start as uh, the lateral, but the difference is it can take uh, fibers from the butane reticular uh, nuclei, same as well. In the uh, here, here we are called lateral reticular spinal, it start from the butane reticular. Uh, uh, nuclei descend till it's reached the anterior horn cell. Okay, this is the two bones tract. Here is the uh, medulla oblongata tract. We have two mid lateral, sorry, lateral uh, rubro spinal. Sorry, I, I confused. Here is the medial, and this is the lateral. So uh, the lateral is start from the medulla, and the medial is start from the bones. Don't uh, mix it as uh, I did before. Uh, here, the lateral, sorry, here the lateral and here the medial. The medial is start from the bones and the lateral start from the lateral, the medulla oblongata. It descending from the medulla oblongata from the reticular, uh, medullary reticular nucleus. Here is the medullary reticular nucleus, it start from it and descending to cross. The, the mid, mid uh, line and descending in the same side till it's reached the anterior horn cell. Okay, as well as in the left side, it starts from the medullary reticular nucleus. Okay, till it start and till it's the in the mid line and complete to give the right the so to give the anterior horn cell. Okay, this is the uh, lateral reticular spinal tract okay now we have the last tract which is olivo spinal tract he it starts from the inferior olivary uh, nucleus this is the inferior olivary nucleus mm, it starts from the olivary nucleus descending through uh, its uh, pathway until it reaches the target which is the anterior horn cell to give its fibers now if we uh, see this is two decussation here, no decussation here. One decussation, which is the lateral, the reticulospinal, and the olivary doesn't decussation. So, two decussation, two doesn't decussation, and one is decussation, one doesn't decussation. Okay, so make it as well as uh, if you want to remember two decussation, two not decussation, one. In the medulla, one decussation, one. Oh, the 
extra pyramidal uh, centers or tags, we, it's the function. We will start with the tic to spinal. The tic to spinal, it carries the fiber of the spinal visual reflexes. Okay, this to be uh, reprospinal is to uh, convey the impulses which is reach the red nucleus from the cerebellum and the motor cortex or the motor cerebral cortex to the spinal cord. Okay. We will move now to the vestibule or the uh, centers of the bones. The vestibule, the vestibule spinal tract, it carries the fibers of equilibrium reaching the vestibular nuclei from the inner ear and the cerebellum to the spinal cord. Now the lateral and the medial, the medial and the lateral uh, reticulospinal tract. The function of it is to influence the voluntary movement and the reflex activity and the muscle tone. Now the last and not least, the olivio uh, spinal tract. The function of it is to connect the spinal cord with the thalamus and the corpus uh, statorium along the olivary thalamic uh, tract or olivary thalamic connection. This is the function of the extrapyramidal tract. Summary of the whole tracts that we have been mentioned earlier in the past minutes, and this is the diagram of the whole tract. So we are going to mention the name of the tract and we will point at its place in the uh, spinal cord so we will start with the ascending in the dorsal column we have glycine cuneate with this is the glycine this is the cuneate and in the lateral column we have the uh, ventral dorsal uh, ventral and dorsal uh, spinal cerebellar tract and the lateral spinal thalamic so this is the dorsal and this is the ventral of uh, spinal cerebellar tract and this is the lateral spinal thalamic tract in the ventriculumin, this is the ventriculumin, we have the ventrospinal thalamic tract, this is the ventral spinal thalamic tract. In between, we have spinal, uh, spinal olivary and spinal tecta. This is the spinal olivary and this is the spinal tecta. This is the first time that we heard of, because I don't mention in the presentation or the uh, earlier in the presentation, because it doesn't matter in comparing to the others. So, in the descending tract, we have a lateral uh, corticospinal. And rubber spine, lateral reticulospinal. This is the lateral corticospinal, and this is the rubber spine, and this is lateral uh, reticulospinal. Okay, in the ventral column, this is the ventral column. We have the ventral corticospinal. I hope that I can reach. Yes, I think this is the ventral. This is the ventral corticospinal okay and the next is the tectospinal uh, and vestibulospinal this is the tectospinal and this is the vestibulospinal and the next is the medial reticulospinal uh, and the end is the olivospinal tract this is the end of us. Oh, I'm sorry that I don't put a thank you slide. Uh, I, I hope that I have been helpful to you. I hope that I make the pathways and the track is easier. And I'm sorry if I didn't. And I'm sorry also about the high rate of uh, speech, like I'm <laughs> rubbing or something like that. Uh, and the end, uh, like subscribe and share. No, sorry, I'm just kidding. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, anything you want to ask or add to my presentation you are welcome to send it to me at the group